Hello. They said there were only going to be 44 people here, and they lied. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about why um, I and two of, the, uh, two of the guys from Karma Robert decided to go to South by uh, for the first time this year. Um, what we thought we were going to find, and actually what we found and why that was a little bit different. So uh, introductions, in a totally non-posed shot, here's us looking for the future. Um, I'm, I'm the tall one on one side, there's Ben, who's hopefully not here, he's the short one in the middle, and then Sid, um, who became quite a star at South By. He was, I think he was generally voted with Nadia from Dare, the nuttiest person at South By for various reasons. And we kind of, um, we, we kind of sold it into ourselves that we were going to do what everyone does when they go to South By for the first time, which is look for the future, look for the big thing we're going to come back and talk to you guys about, or clients, or internally, or justify to our wives while we spent a week um, uh, getting drunk and, and playing with tech. Um, and South by, always, South by has always been known for the next big thing. Uh, unfortunately, at one point, that next big thing was James Blunt. Uh, move on. I'm sorry if there are any James Blunt fans, but he's awful. Um, um, the, but, and then it increasingly became about tech. So everyone knows this. 2007, Twitter suddenly came from nowhere. 2011, uh, it was Foursquare. So for a while, it was all about app, apps. It was about these small, self-contained things that was very easy to understand. They either got consumers to do things they were already doing in a different way, like Foursquare, so checking in when you're going somewhere, or try to reinvent what consumers did from a behavioural point of view, like Twitter. And that was great, because we could come back and we could package it, and we could go, Twitter's big, give us some money. Foursquare's big, give us some money. And so we thought, brilliant, we'll go there, and we'll find what that next big thing is, and then we'll sell it to our clients. Um, and this will be a theme, um, which I'm going to steal first, before the other two guys are up, which is, we kind of didn't find one big thing, but in a way that was quite liberating, and we, um, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, as, as Amelia said, there's an awful lot of things you can go and see. Uh, one of them was my robot girlfriend, um, which, uh, which Ben, our CEO, went to see. I'm, sure, I'm not quite sure how he explained that to his wife when he showed the pictures, but um, it wasn't very good, apparently. Uh, the, the guy was more interested in explaining basically how he built a sex doll and connected it to the internet, which is quite interesting, but not really the big thing we were looking for, certainly not something we could sell to B&Q, anyway. Um, and, um, and then um, there were other things. So this was part of our gore speech. That's called a spider goat, genetically crossed goat and spider. Why? Uh, because spider silk is um, a very valuable commodity, but you can't farm spiders, but you can farm goats. Al Gore didn't think this was an amazing thing, and, and neither did we, but again, it was, it was, it's, a, it's an example of kind of how much your brain expands and attempts to blow up when you're trying to find um, what happens next. Um, and then we kind of felt a bit like, so The Onion, of course, being, being very funny and satirical, started to put out stuff like, um, middle-aged marketing people go to conference with no real idea why they've gone. So there was a very funny article about Arm and Hammer representative starts to wonder why he's at South by. Um, if you haven't read it, it was a. It kind of encapsulates the the feeling you get halfway through. There's lots of cues. It rained for the first first uh, first day solidly. It was like being in London. We were a bit like, why did we come to this? Um, and then we thought, okay, let's let's relax a bit. Let's stop looking for the big thing, and then let's let's go to lots of different stuff. The three of us split up rather than following each other around like freshers, and um, and started to started to realise that there was a bigger theme, which is a kind of a macro theme, which is um, digital has evolved to the point where um, it kind of connects us to everything, and that that happens in lots of different ways. So there's um, there's 3D printing, which connects us back to making products, or there's um, there's the Internet of Things, which Nigel will come to talk about. So I'm going to talk to you about two things that we kind of, uh, we kind of discovered were out there. One of them, invisible interfaces. We're very careful about talking about Google products in a Google building where I can't go to the toilet, but I'll do it anyway. Um, so this image kind of sums up where, where Google, I think, are coming from in terms of um, products like Google Glass. So the top image is the inauguration, if that's the right word, of the Pope in 2005, and the bottom one is the one from 2013. Notice that these things we carry around that were supposed to liberate us are suddenly becoming this layer of things that sit between us and reality. I think Sergey Brin said they emasculate us, which slightly weird take on gender politics perhaps, but I, I, get, I get what he means. Um, and so that's where Google Glass is, uh, comes into play, that it's something that you wear and take, take pictures. I'll play a little bit of the Google Glass uh, promo that they, they played when we went to see it. I'll, I'll only play a little bit. but. For those of you that haven't seen this, I imagine you will have this is what you will see, Google Glass, on your top right hand, or the, your right hand eye as you experience the world.
Okay, Glass, record a video. This is it, we're on in two minutes. Okay, Glass, hang out with the Flying Club. Google photos of tiger heads. Hmm. You ready? You ready? Right there. Okay, Glass, take a picture. So you kind of get the impression again if you if you ha if you haven't seen that that there's now the the thing that you're wearing uh, tech kind of interfaces with you rather than you having to deliberately interface with it and that was a theme that continued and um, went to the Google Google Playground where they had some uh, kind of more arty takes on this so the Google's talking shoe which was really interesting um, and then one of if not for me the standout of the show was um, Leap Motion which again lots of you will probably know about. Um, $80 piece of kit that plugs into your, um, your desktop and allows you to um, control it via gesture. We kind of all heard that before, but having played with this, it, the, 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 level of, um, uh, uh, the, the level of control and accuracy it gives you is, is genuinely phenomenal, even for someone as, um, as jaded as me. So I'll play a little bit of this, if it works. So if I, um, if I recommend one thing you do oops, off, off, uh, after this is go back, whoever it is controls the budget for toys at your agency, get them to buy two or three of these for $80. Um, I think they've just pushed back the launch date because they had, they've had such a big sign up. But uh, we, we've, got, we've got a developer kit in the agency and even in its raw state, it is truly amazing in terms of the control you get from it. Um, the other theme I wanted to talk about was, was kind of digital becoming uh, more emotional or allowing allowing people to, to get more emotional. And I think this is the thing that's potentially the most interesting for brands and clients. Digital started being very rational and it's, uh, it was all about solving problems and it was a computer that lived, you know, it was the internet connected to a computer that lived in your desktop and then it became apps. And I think um, a bunch of stuff we saw started to suggest that people are actually using it as an end to, to make, make their lives um, uh, more connected back to the real world. So. Um, we went to a Goodby Silverstein panel, um, which was the best thing we went to at South By. Because the problem with South By is, and this, this will sound a bit bad, is you have, to, you have to queue and there's kind of no VIP, there's no secret, <laughs> there's no secret BA gold card route round the back and it's all quite hot and sweaty and in clubs and that's lovely, but I'm 36 and I want a bit more than that now. So the Goodby party was at the top of this beautiful hotel with champagne and it felt a bit like we were back in advertising, which was dreadfully reassuring. But most interesting was a panel of people who got together. They had a guy from um, OK Go and a lady from a venture capitalist firm who said, we only invest in businesses who are going to uh, dem demonstrate an ability to connect consumers back to the real world. We're not interested in apps, we're not interested in tech. If that business has a way to allow enhance people's lives and have a more emotional effect on their lives, then we'll invest in them. So we thought, okay, this is quite interesting. Went to another talk where JWT were talking about some research that, that they'd done with, um, I think it was Experian. We all know vinyl's big again, fine, but I was really surprised to find out the Hallmark, the stationery, uh, the card uh, people have had their best two years ever for the last two years in the States, and moleskin's about to float. And so all these things that digital was supposed to replace and get rid of and kill off, actually people are still sending cards and they're still writing down things with nice pens in nice books. Um, and we saw, we saw some stuff along those lines from MIT. So this is, I can't explain this properly. So Google, Google 8D um, MIT, but basically this is an, an 8D box. So inside, imagine there's a 3D model of me, um, which is totally made up uh, in, in ones and zeros. You could walk around it with a torch and shine the torch onto it and it will reflect the light perfectly. Um, the, we said, I put my hand up and said, why, is, why do you call it 8D? And this, this, this incredibly geeky guy said, 3D isn't enough, which is a fair enough answer. But it's an incredible piece of kit. 
Um, and this, for th those of you who have kids, um, this is quite, quite an amazing one. So imagine you're, um, you're in South By and you want to read your, um, your two daughters a bedtime story. They have a box in their room. And as you start to read them a story about pirates, um, the, the box starts to project the sea on their wall. And as you say, the pirate ship comes over the horizon, a pirate ship comes over the horizon. This is called the narratorium. It doesn't really exist yet. It was a great trick. They put that picture up, described it. All the parents started crying. And then we said, can we buy it? And they went, no, we're MIT. We don't make stuff. So, um, so if anyone from Google here is here uh, um, who's, who's important enough, I suggest you make this, because every parent in the country will buy one. Um, and then there was this type of stuff, so reverse, reversing this whole trend of the Sunday supplement ads going, take your VHS and put it on DVD. This is a machine that takes your Spotify or iTunes playlist and burns it onto vinyl. And there was all, all of this sort of type of stuff. And then I guess most importantly, there's these brands. So Amelia mentioned Airbnb. We stayed in an Airbnb treehouse, which was cheaper and nicer than the Hilton because it was owned by someone. We got there, they gave us a basket of fruit. They said, those two cafes are amazing, that one's awful. Here's two cab numbers you should try, here's my phone number. It was, we felt at home as soon as we arrived, rather than arriving at the Hilton and feeling like we could be anywhere in the world. Everyone knows what Etsy does, connects people with small manufacturers of goods and relay rides. Rather than getting a, a dull golf or a course when you go on holiday, you can borrow someone's car. So th this is when, when I've talked about South By to, to our clients, this is the bit that kind of gets them interesting because there's some real business proof that connecting people back to emotional experiences really works. Um, and I'll finish on a Japanese phenomenon called Miku. Again, some of you may have heard this. So. This is a little bit, we, we went to see, it was, there were 20 of us in the room and the two Japanese guys all wearing black with a translator and I thought, brilliant, this is it. <laughs> this is like this proper geek heaven. I'm not going to understand a word of it. So Miku, a guy bought a synthesizer, a uh, piece of synthesizer software from Yamaha, got a session musician to record some singing, put it on the internet and said, you can write, uh, write lyrics, um, do artwork, um, and make songs. So a bunch of people went to make songs and it went kind of nuts. And then they went, okay, people are making this music, now they want a real world experience, but it doesn't exist, it's a synthesizer that sits in our server room. So they went and they, being Japanese, um, developed a hologram, which looks a bit like a 16 year old schoolgirl, and 10,000 Japanese kids go and watch this hologram perform their songs. which is a bit nuts. And then, then Sega said, we make a video game out of this. And so they sold a million units of that. But what was interesting is, if you go to the gig and your artwork or your songs plays, you get a free ticket. If your artwork's in the Sega game, you get a split of the revenue. So what they've done is they've kind of built a community that the community has built this thing that then they're happy to sell. If my favorite band made an ad, I'd be really annoyed and stop listening to them because I'd think they'd sold out. Whereas these kids are happy for Miku to sell out because they feel like it's them that's getting the record deal or making the game. And then Grumpy Cat, um, Amelia. Amelia was the one that we were stood there going, how are we going to get in to see Grumpy Cat? And Amelia just walked through another exit and we followed her. And then we took a picture of Grumpy Cat and walked out and loads of people growled at us because they stood in the rain for two hours. But Mashable won South by Southwest by having Grumpy Cat. Uh, over all the other incredible 3D printing and Elon Musk and all that, they won because that's all that anyone talked about, which is a stretch, but it's kind of people going to experience the real thing that they've been, experience, they've been experiencing online. Um, so that's it. Thank you for having me.